As now this one right here, he says he cannot, it will not shift out on its own. He says he can manually shift it out, but he will not shift out on his own. He just had a new motor put in this. So let's take a look at what's going on here. What kind of codes we got here. All right, we have a AIC valve opening <coughs> coil voltage low. Okay, so we'll check. We'll check that. We got a TDC severity two of three. Repair immediately if drivability issue are present. Issues are present. Threat to drivability issues are present. Threat to essential system components. If not essentially system components, if not repair as soon as possible. That's a uh, 1505. Okay, so I have a throttle pedal sensor A circuit low input. So 122, 1505. I got zero codes out of the transmission. Okay, that's cool. I can dig it. So that's a 1505 and a 1507. And we have a throttle position sensor, A circuit, low input. Okay, low, low, low. All right, so but he said he wasn't having these problems before he put the motor in there. And it was at another shop and they had it for like three months. And he says, forget it, man. I'm going to go pick this up. I'm going to bring it to Hayes. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Good luck, because I'm not the super tech. But anyways, we're gonna try to, we're gonna figure this thing out. So let's go ahead and take off this uh, cover. Let's get in there and see what's going on. Hey, let's get to the house, please. Go. All right, let's take this thing for a drive. Okay, I need my big scan tool. I feel so naked without the. Would you get to the house? Go. Okay, first gear. Yeah, it's not coming out of first gear. It's not coming out of first gear. RPMs, 4,000. Oh, it shifted. It just shifted late. not coming out of second gear though it's not coming out of second gear <sighs> let's try that again I don't know what he's talking about RPMs. Yeah, it shifted at 4,000. Trying to get some space because I'm running up on that truck. I almost hit 4,000 so I can get in the third gear if it's going to make it. Let's see if we can do it. Shifts at 4,000, second gear. to go a little bit faster <laughs> he needs to go faster let me wait a minute because he is slow poking all right let's do it let's wait till he gets up a little bit further and there's a car coming and that should be good enough all right all right, it shifted, second gear. Yeah, third gear. All right, it's shifting. 
it's shifting, it's just shifting really, really late. So let's go. Yeah, let's just go ahead. Uh, let's go ahead and shut off the car again. Let's clear codes. <coughs> clear all codes. Check engine lights not on anymore. Okay, system status. Okay, scan all again. Scan all modules. It looks like the codes came right back. Yep, same code, same code. O2 sensor, throttle position, pedal position sensor, low input. All right, so those are the codes we're going to be dealing with. I think I'm going to start with the uh, throttle position. I think I'm going to start with that first. P0122. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get on all data real quick. And let's get a diagram. 05 Kia Sportage is what it is. Okay, it's just shifting really, really late, like 4,000 RPMs. Kia Sportage. Two wheel drive. It's got a 2.7 liter motor in this one. Yep, 2.7 liter motor. Let's go to uh, powertrain management. We can go to, uh, I believe all this is going to be connected. And what I do know is uh, I can erase all three of those codes. And they will come back immediately, immediately, all of them. So I'll kick that on. Keys in the on position. The PCM supplies. Hey girl, what's up? Supplies five volts. I see 12 volts. All right, that's the wrong one. That's the TP sensor I was probing right then. Okay, it's 2.8, it's good ground. And there's five volts right there. There's five volts right there on the, uh, on the eye layer control valve. There's my ground on the eye layer control valve. And I have a, a voltage of 2.8 on the other one. So that may be normal. I've seen those kind of numbers before. So that's going to be right here. Go ahead and plug that back up again. This other plug right here. It's going to be the uh, TP sensor. Okay. That, I think, is going to be where our issue lies. Let's get some voltages out of here. I have uh, five, 0.59 on, I don't know what color wire that is because it's 12 volts. And I have 3.7. I have no ground tone on the TP sensor. So let's get a schematic up on the TP sensor. And I think our issue is going to be in the TP sensor or at least in the wiring. I don't believe it's the sensor. Could be, but uh, I'm not getting a ground tone. So, and I should be getting a ground tone. Let me double check that guys. 0. 0.59. All right, 0.59, you guys see it? K 
key is in the on position. 12.44 volts. That is battery voltage. And I got 3.75 on the other one. And I'll go ahead and pull back the, the, uh, the loom a little bit. It looks like there's going to be a blue wire, a pink wire, and a white wire on there. And I'll pull that back so we can take a better look-see. Just does that, jumps back and forth. Okay, I really don't know what that means. But that doesn't look right, obviously. So that was that was pin two and three. Guys, now looking at the schematic, the black and orange wire should be on the TP sensor. So what they did was they just put this connector on the idle air control valve and that one on that one. So I'm gonna start this thing up and let's see if those codes go away. All right guys, we're on the test drive. We're, of course we're idling, uh, we're idling really low right now, about 600 RPMs. Okay, let's take it for a test drive. It should shift out normally now, now that I got the P TP sensor. In there. Well, it's not shifting normally. No, the check engine light's not coming on again, but it's definitely not shifting correctly. not shifting well I guess it's not done check engine lights still not on so we got another issue here we can do it manual shifting let's see if we can do manual shifting Still not shifting, so that sucks. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, so we started up now. Now the RPMs go up to uh, 2,500 RPMs. Check engine light does not come back on immediately anymore. Uh, so yeah, we fixed that. Throttle bot for the TP sensor might be it might be out of adjustment or put in installed incorrectly. I don't know. We'll have to check that. Uh, yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. The wire connectors on the TPS and the idle air control valve they were on the wrong they were on the wrong uh, pieces. So we're back. So we're looking at it again this morning because now we have a high RPM. I'm going to check the TPS for that. Uh, check the throttle body. It looks like it's a brand new throttle body they put on here. Brand new TPS sensor and a brand new idle air control valve. These connectors will actually fit on. They'll just switch your roux on it. So I switched them back right. Uh, the check engine light is not coming back on right now. But let me crank it up for you. And we'll show you what's going on right now with it. Uh, we got a couple to do today. We got this Dodge that I had a water leak on. Uh, several water leaks, actually. Uh, so we got this one taken care of. Went to the dealer and picked up parts for that. And we're just going to take care of this one today. And that's going to be all I'm going to do today. So let's get to it. Let me start it up. And let's see what it sounds like. It's still kind of cold. I let it run for a couple minutes, about 30 minutes ago. RPMs are really, really high. I hit the gas a little bit. I 
I don't know if that throttle uh, plate is in the right position or not or TPS problem I don't know yet it's not a vacuum leak because it will idle down maybe when it gets warmed up <clears throat> one problem that I am having is I don't have my stencil I had to send it away to get repaired because it was shutting in off and on you guys know about that already I think I think I mentioned that but uh, or maybe that was a video I didn't put out yet it might be that so anyways I guess we can check I didn't check for an engine light engine light still not on so that's fixed so we have another issue it still shifts uh, Shadow, get over here. It still doesn't want to shift on time like it's supposed to. I'm just going to unplug the, uh, the TP sensor. And it goes back down to normal. Okay. I wasn't expecting that, but it was worth a shot. So the TP sensor is acting funny. All right, guys, this is the throttle position sensor we're looking at right now. So you see with you have the, the black and the orange stripe right there. That was actually on the idle air control valve. Uh, so I just swapped them over. But how would you know that if the connectors fit it doesn't matter where you put the connectors they'll fit uh, the only way that you can really know if you got the right connector is you have a wiring diagram right so uh you guys got to try to get some wiring diagrams get a some kind of service like i said before to help you out a little bit i'm thinking we got something wrong with this uh with the tps or it's not in there correctly and it's it's showing the throttle plate opened more than it should be. Or I got a bad sensor. It's a brand new sensor. Not, you know, not saying that a brand new sensor can be bad because ever since COVID hit, I've been doing a lot of bad electro electrical parts. I'm just saying. So let's get the, uh, I'm gonna have to get the idle air control off as well because it's in my way. So I'll pull that off, I'll pull the sensor out of there, and we'll just do this job over again, just to be on the safe side. And key is on, foot is not on the gas. And I'm at 55.7%. All the way down on the gas, I'm at 100%. Let off the gas. I'm at 55%. We have to re we have to fix that. That's not correct. So let me take the TPS off once again. We'll take a look at it. Maybe put another one on there. I can do some resistance readings on the TPS. I could do that. And uh Yeah, it fits all the way off the gas. It's not sticking. Okay, it's not sticking. Okay, so. We're at, uh, on startup, it's around 800 RPMs. I'm still at 55% on the TPS. Let me just barely touch it. RPMs are going up by themselves. It's increasing, it's increasing. My foot is not on the pedal at all. 56%. Popped a gas pedal one time. Off the gas pedal, it's still at 2.75 RPMs. Still 56%. Let's uh, take it off again. All right, I took the bolts out of the TPS and now I'm at 47%. 
38, 31. I'm turning the TPS. Take a look at this TPS sensor. All right, I'm at three percent. All right, I'm turning it hundred percent. Three percent is right there, so that's where I need to set it right there, something like that. Let me double check going uh clockwise is increasing the value i know you guys can't see the scan tool but let me get you over here the scan tool i'm turning it clockwise you can see the percentage is raising 100 percent i'm gonna let it go it's spring it's spring operated Okay, now in the release it's 2.7. So I need to set it. I need to set that. And you see down in there you have two little ears on there. So I'm going to get this set somehow just like that. I've never had problems putting in a TPS before, but this one's kind of weird. So, yeah, it's going clockwise on that. So if I put this in there like that, yeah, it's going clockwise. So that has to go. That has to go like that. That should be zero right there. Alright, I'm going to click this over and just look at it. I can't get 100% on that one. I can get 82% on full throttle, 86% on full throttle. like 6.3 without pushing down yeah. 5.5% you know what I can't do it any better than that so let me put these bolts back in it just like it sits and then we'll try this thing again. Okay. I'm at 7%. Not good enough. 7% open. Huh? You know what? The throttle body is supposed to have a little bit of gap in it. opened it's actually a lot <sighs> let's put this other bolt in there we'll put this thing back together again we'll give it a drive look at the numbers Again, I'm gonna go from there. I'm at seven percent. It's not too terribly bad. It's not zero. Well, we're 
going to give it a shot. We might have to take this thing back off again, but... Yeah, it's an 05 Kia. I'm not real happy with the scan tool either. I'm sure it's doing an okay job, but I'm just used to my scan tool. Like the way you step on the gas and then wants to stay up at 3,000 rpm so this should definitely fix that issue maybe it was all the TPS adjustment <sighs> all right let's plug up there's a humming noise when I when I plugged up that's not right there's a humming noise. I felt that earlier. Key is in the on position. And that idle air control valve is like humming. <sighs> That's not supposed to happen. <clears throat> so now I'm around 700 RPMs. That looks really good. All right, I'm sitting back in the vehicle. I'm at, let's turn off the key. Turn it back on. We're at seven seven percent. Push the foot all the way down on the gas. Eighty six percent all the way full throttle. Let off seven. Okay, that's better. Let's give this thing a drive and let's see what happens. Yeah, let's do it. Hey, stay here. I'll be back. Ah, we shifted. It shifted good. That's a wrap, guys. Yep, shifted again. We're in third gear right now. Going uh, 25 miles an hour. All right, that's a wrap on that one, guys. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. All right, guys, that was just a, uh, a poorly adjusted TP sensor, not only by the guys at the shop and the other guy that tried to fix it but myself because i did it the same way and if i didn't have a scan tool telling me what percent my throttle plate was open uh yeah i would have been spinning my wheels for and scratching my head forever so uh it's important guys i've been telling all these guys that i've trained out here in jackson uh how can you do anything without a scan tool I mean, a code reader is, is a good start. If you got a code reader, at least it gives you a little bit of direction. Uh, and especially, well, you have to, well, actually, code reader is fine, but you actually really need something with live sensor data on it. Uh, and then, you know, upgrade or just go ahead, go out all the way out and get you a nice bi directional scan tool. Uh, so you can read stuff like this and saves you time so I'm done so I'm gonna go home I'm gonna button it up tighten up my bolts and call the customer and say hey man you come pick this thing up uh, we do have this one uh, left on it and uh, I'll post a little bit of the clip on this video I'm at a standstill right now all right just the second part of this uh, of this video we're working on this uh, 2013 Dodge Ram 1500 it had a uh, he broke the window out and yes it, it did get wet and uh, anyways we're replacing this one uh, this is actually the one that was the actual the one that's for this vehicle I had to put it back in for the simple fact that I bought another one on eBay 
and uh, come to find out you cannot unless someone knows something other than what I know uh, you cannot once these are programmed it's right only so once you program it it's it, it's over you can't you got to replace it with a new unit you can't program it. you can't program it so I have to buy a brand new one and put it in here I did not know that and why are they even selling it on eBay anyways you know if you can't program the damn unit why are you trying to sell it on eBay do your research before you sell stuff <laughs> so I have to go find a new one and they're back ordered by the way 2013 Dodge Ram back ordered you know maybe the chip shortage has something to do with it more than likely but you can't find one dealerships back ordered so uh, unless someone knows where I can get one contact me immediately immediately because I need one I'm not trying to spend a dealership wants $180 for the module I checked online and some people want you know seven hundred eight hundred a thousand dollars just for the RH hub module that's what it's called the RF hub module and uh, yeah and that's it guys I'll see you next time and we'll get this thing programmed I got a new scan tool coming so we can do all that programming uh, when I get that tool so it's gonna be another stepping stone for Hayes mobile auto repair all right guys we out of here peace Jackson Mississippi Hayes mobile auto repair Jackson Mississippi there it goes all right so it does remote start okay door and for those of you who don't know you have to push the button to drive it because if you don't push the button see the light is blinking now I'm able to drive the car if I was just to get in this car and step on the brake without touching that button button the vehicle would die or yeah it would die so uh, so anyways let me shut it off let me show you it does not start it will not start like this push on the brake that's all you get that's all you get you get all your lights and everything everything is fine and that will come on the code that you're going to be getting on this one is implausible ignition so uh we put it on scan tool and we've seen everything we've seen the live data and all that kind of good stuff we'll go over that when i do this video but we're definitely changing out the rf hub module Get him, Ace. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Get him, Ace. Go get him, boy. Shadow. Shadow, come here. <laughs> Shadow, come here. Let's go. Ace is ready to get him. Shadow, come here. There he is, Gary. <laughs> Ooh. Shadow, get out of the street. Get out of the street. We don't do that. Let's go in the house. All right, guys. We out. Peace.